So the signal and going down to the drivers to uh, get themselves underway on this slow rolling lap. Blue top drivers, there's two of those, Ben Riley in 422 and 169 is Billy Johnson. So keep your eyes on the progress of Tom Boyer. Nigel Harley, number 45, the informed Joe Booth, who's uh, been scoring points up and down the country and at the moment uh, would think it'd be a red top for the first gradings of the new season. There's Russell Cooper in 415, while she spies in the 451 car. And he's spiking there in the 231 car, Skegness final winner to his name. Mark Gray, the last of the years in 224. There's one or two of might have missed out as they came past us in race control. Craig Finnegan was missing from the star grade lineup. They'll be hoping for better fortunes, although the back end of last season certainly going to get it together again. And there's Danny Wayman and Matt Lewis from 16 and 212 at the back of the group of superstar drivers in the heat one for the Formula Ones. the wave yellows are called for Russell Cooper manages to find reverse and so so Ben Herman is the driver to look out for seems that all of safety navigated that first turn Uh, slow rolling that Booth is much closer than he was prior to the wave yellows. Ben Herman is quick to put the accelerator down. And away they go again as Smith unperturbed by it all. Johnson in the 169 car making a uh, good effort of this one. He's, uh, he's right behind Dowson. He's got Raymond right behind him too. Ben Herman goes Extremely wide shifts into the loser's shale but manages to keep things quite tidy. Another driver that uh, was really qualified last season. 
Randy Harrison, 25, he's looking to get with that 4 2 2 car. Harrison driving on shell, gaining experience. Which is the side of the 422 car. With the lead, it's now Smith that's got still got a, a bit of an advantage, but Booth goes in extremely hard on the back of the 40 car. Smith survives that challenge. And Booth is right over it. Joe Booth right, trying to get some more valuable points. John Dowson will not be uh, want to hang back neither two men earn them two hard charges in the sport. Change of leader on the back straight. It's 446 from Smith. He did break late into the turn but wasn't quite close enough to mount a challenge. Booth though with that lead position. Looks like Dowson's got the advantage on the inside to go into second place. Herman goes into third as Smith drops back into fourth position. Three remaining for the race leaders. It looks like Booth might have this one in the bag. He's got himself quite a sizable lead and Ben Herman and John Dowson occupying each other. Smith trying to get back on the back end of that battle for second place. And he's now got Danny Wayman to contend with. Wayman goes in absolutely not meant to the 40 car. 446, looking for another race win. Wave Yellow's requesting. Wave Yellow's. Not sure what the 94 car is able to do. Is he, is he mobile? Yep. Green are though. This will be interesting. Now some clearly got problems. They're winding things up now. This time he's shown us one lap to go. Last lap of the race. There goes Ben Herbert. Tries to have a real stab at the back of the 440. Look at Raymond on the back straight. As Raymond got the knowledge, yes, he puts a big hit on the back of the 440. car. all cars go extremely wide. It's going to be three as they take the check of play. 446 from 207 and 212. Great race, great last lap. Red flags, some red lights. So maybe uh, there's another driver, lead that um, could over the course of the season, got a few headlines for himself. So let's complete the lineup for the yellows. And uh, ah, Crikey, it's Frankie JJ in 555, five, five. Nicky Wilson in 502, and uh, the winner of the Stoke final, 175, Carl Hawkins. He was absolutely delighted with that win. And he was always coming last season, he just now thereabouts, wasn't he? But uh, just a bit of bad fortune or an error, and he was uh, done all, under all the hard work. But, um, Kept it all together for that stroke, yeah, that's for sure. The winner is the missing red top 220. There is Rob Speak and uh, mentioned already, and E in that 339 car. Someone went 
right towards the oil cone. And um, truck stuff down there, just in the tenders, making sure the driver's okay. Unsurprisingly, wave yellows. That was some impact, and all the cars going either side of the stationary 250. So look out for Nigel Green in this one, certainly Paul Harrison in the number two car. You go Green. Scott Davis has uh, been spun by him now. Gilbank and Hunter at the back of the field for the moment. Just to see the, uh, the progress of Nigel Green because uh, he's emerged as one of the top names in the sport over the past season. And he's got um, Paul Harrison to contend with this one. This will be a measure of uh, how much development Nigel Green has made and needs to make if he's uh, really established himself as one of the top names in the sport. Uh, he's not uh, doing himself any favours at the moment. So, uh, once Harrison went past him, we lost quite a bit of time. Still leading. And Carl Hawkins in 175 now, up into second place. Then Paul Harrison already up into third position, even in this early part of the race. Adkins drifts wide. Another driver that's uh, always on the, on the fringe of keeping it together for a full race distance, but once the heat gets on in the latter stage of the race, he seems to get a few nerves and a few others slip in. And he's made a mistake again there. So Atkins overcooks the first turn. And that's the difference. You just need to keep your nerve in these situations. Paul Harrison, who won this corresponding meeting final this time last year, is already up into second place, all over the back of the 24 car. Uh, without too much trouble goes into that lead position. Hawkins keen to see if he can also move up the place. But it's two from 24 175. Then a recovered green. And Gilbank up there two. It looks like uh, there's a couple of cars on the back straight. Wave yellows one more time for two cars down there on the back straight. I think Company. The third place at Coventry. Oh, what's happened to Paul Harrison? 
Harris has slowed dramatically right in front of the pit turn. Something's happened to the Harrison car. Nigel Green, your new race leader, as they're going to the final lap of the race. There's a puncture. Got a flat tyre, Paul Harrison. Outside rear. A blown tyre, and that's dropping him rapidly towards the back of the field. Nigel Green looks like he's been ready to see that checker flag for a chance of swing for Green. Checker flag falls. Second is 24. Third 21. And then 175. Where's Harrison? Just takes the checker flag. Everything was going so right for Paul Harrison. But in the end, a blown tyre blew his chances. An interesting race. Here we go then, heat three time for the Formula One's 430, Craig Aston on the uh, front row, alongside his, uh, Chris Fornelli at 32, car looks like he's had a lick of paint and didn't look any extra smart. Tim Warwick 307, Pete Manning in the higher car 331, there's Austin Moore in 127, I think it was number 43. Is the back of the white truck drivers, Adam Bamford. Good to see that uh, Rob Carley, 73 with us this evening. Dave Wood is ahead of him. We've got 321, Ed Neutral, Chris Boxop in at 338, and Mal Brown in at 34. Extra to the programme is 53, John Lunn. Nice to see Will Yellow back this season in 22, and then Paul Hines in 259. Superstar drivers, Dan Johnson and the speed machine, Frankie Wayman Jr. So 
463 from 407, 215, close and it's half distance for this race. Eric Lowe going down. Johnson there on the back of the 22 car. Willis going backwards down the back straight. And uh, Cousins has to go on the inside to see if he can outmaneuver. Rich Bryan there, tooth wet. No more than he had to do. He just went on the infield as best he possibly could to avoid collecting that 337 car. Still 463 from 307, 215, 34. Hines is the first of the star grey drivers, but into the second part of the race. Dan Johnson and Junior Wayman, they're absolutely locked together, lap after lap after lap. Neither place is no less, but what a scrap between those two star names in the sport. Morris is keeping his composure with five to go for the lead car. Nichols now up into second place, Warwick driving well, still third. And then Mel Brown, Paul Hyde on the infield, what's happened to Paul Hyde in 259? Mel Brown's gone. So within a space of a quarter of a lap, Paul Hyde and Mel Brown are up amongst the leaders around of this one. So Morris now has got himself a reasonable advantage. Three laps to go. Looks like Jeff Nichols in second place. Joyce has got ahead of Wayman. Didn't see that one, but um, it would have been hard fought, that's for sure. Wayne Yarrow driving great tonight. Not at the rub of the green in heat three, over less. There's a problem there for Wayman. Tried to spin out Broxop and just Rocks up went right across the front of the 515 car. That's that board to be shown this time for 463. So roll over in the season at Kings Lane, and then looks like he's going to take a heat win tonight. Down the back straight for the final time, into the country turn. Nothing behind him. The checker flag at the ready. The checker flag falls to 463. Jeff Nichols may be in second place from 307 and 515. Dan Johnson's just disappeared from the lap charts. There's Johnson. No flags of red lights. Not entirely sure that happened to Dan Johnson in that one. Right up amongst the race, race leaders for much of the race. I mean, real scrap throughout this. So Jordan Folding will be instructed has got uh, issues with his brakes and therefore has been allowed to start at the back of the green. Oh, Rothgard in the H112 car, there's Adam Banford in 43, Colin May in 280, Joe Thompson in 386, and Chris Fennell in 32. And then the yellow top drivers, Elliot Smith in 293, maybe he's only won a recent race at Bellevue and the part of the season. There's Frank Lowe and JJ in that 555 car. And came very close to winning the meeting final was uh, Bobby Griffin in 166. 
that's been going uh, together, so the, the chunks disappear. And then Martin scores at uh, 2, at 4, 5, 1. So, some very, very strong yellow top drivers. Uh, blue top's just one of those 3, 2, 1. And then uh, the three reds, a couple of superstar drivers, Matt Newsom now taking his place at the rear of the group. And uh, the air system is going by lots of things. Austin Moore gets it completely wrong. Being jostled and pushed down the home straight, but it looks like he's got himself off the inside racing line and as everybody switch past him, the shoe will find gear and he'll be able to retrain the race. Just trying to reverse off on the infield yet, he's managed to do just that. All action all around the top of the track, John Thompson, 386, is one of the first casualties. Parks up. He's come to a hold right on the infield, so he's out of contention in this one. Look at Dave Willis. A hard charger. Not going to give an inch. And uh, since he's having a decent run so far, very early part of the race, but a big huge of close quarters, a couple of cars on the big turn. And Willis, ah, uh, Willis just collided with a 331 car, picked out him. He's trying to reverse out of the way, not to do just that by the looks of things. So it's the Dutch driver. I am this guy in that 112 car is uh, driving extremely well in this one. A couple more casualties on the infield. Ed Newton now begins to get some momentum. So to Paul Hines, Paul Hines sends a two or three cars towards the rise. That's the way to do it. Really sent them pack in there. So it's 1 1 2 leading from Jason Eaton in that 4 4 8 car. Looks like Elliot Smith now goes up into second place. And Paul Hines has gone. He's trying so well just a lap or so ago, but something's happened with that particular car. Is now out of contention. And it's getting close at the front between those three cars. This car in that uh, 112 car has got Elliot Smith all over with Smith there. So there's a chance, yeah, he's taking an opportunity. So new leader, 293 from 112, 448 and 321 FP2 in fourth position. Then Finnegan comes next and then Rob Speed. And then to the second part of the race, Smith leads from the Dutch driver, H112. Ed Beetle now begins to wind things up. They need to do just that because he's got Finnick and Speak and John Dowson not too far further back. Another excellent race this one. It's not over yet because the Dutch driver, this guy is hanging in there somehow. Smith can't seem to shake him. Here comes Nietzsche, here comes Finnegan. They now move up into third and fourth position. Jason Eaton there just stops into a gap in between. Eaton gets sent wide as Speak now tries to get right up alongside Finnegan. It's five to go next time. So it's still Smith that leads. And it's Smith. Driving well within himself by the looks of things. Just needs to keep things pretty tidy because certainly the Dutch driver is not going to catch him. Where's Finnegan and Speak? There's the danger and there's four laps remaining. So this is this is when the pressure starts to mount. There goes Speak, he's dispatched the white top driver. So Speak now in the second position. Super follow through by Finnegan. Smith is closing on the back markers but I think all of a sudden he's going to have one speak right on his tail end and Finnegan 2-6 there not out of contention this one Smith goes wide out of the second turn down the back straight here comes the first bit of contact from Rob Speak Speak just eases through majestic manoeuvre there on the current world champion Finnegan goes through into second place Smith has a go at the back of the Finnegan car he's trying to get back into second position Finnegan can see that challenge coming, you don't think he's close enough to catch and challenge 318 for that lead position. His back markers all around the leaders though. And it looks like they've just entered the last lap of the race. Looks like 
looks like Speed's going to take a victory. Check a flag at the ready. Well, Speed takes it right now from his second place finicking. Smith manages to stay in third position from Mitchell and Matt Newson next over the line. That'll be a popular win for the Rob Speed fans. 318 confirmed is your race winner. Should try to do the tank to his goodness as well. <laughs> we never know what he's going to have to, but uh, we're going to put him over as well. Rob, come on down. Smart, no choice there then. <laughs> there he goes. The real master, real speed. Picks his face up for the final. And uh, I wish you well for that. Now, I might mention. Right up the left, yeah, and we've also got, yeah, yeah, we've got the uh, cross shield as well. The other top driver is 2038 Smith, Jeff Nichols in 205, 244, the clock is short. Sure. Almost ready to show them the green flag one more time. And uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of anticipation in this one because uh, every race this season at Coventry, but in particular the finals, are some of the many history books for all those reasons we all know about. So, Mr. Starter Tony Osborne, ready to be satisfied. Yeah, he likes to show them the green flag, away they go. Thomas Stevenson has got himself a reasonable start. Looks like Dan Johnson spun out. So then Johnson made it over, which is very, very unusual. But uh, as we look, oh, it was, maybe pardon, it was 202. So not like Dan Johnson, I thought it would likely be Dan Johnson that made uh, a bit of an error on his own. And those two cars from a distance in this line are not quite similar. Green's gone, taken with Danny Wayne. Trying to separate themselves as a across the infield, Danny Spiker also out of contention. It's fast and furious, isn't it? Steve 
actually slipping down the field somewhat now, and it's the Dutch driver. And it's Clark is in that lead position, so he's good for all the carnage. 293 and it's Smith in that second place. One Joe Boone, who's one that's uh, getting really high amongst the points this season. Stevenson goes into Myers. Gilbank, maybe Gilbank's up there. There, Mark Gilbank has said, uh, oh my word, I think he wants Jeff Nichols out of the way. So Gilbank now already is in second place. And that moves him not too far further back. The next to the next to show, school has got a flat tyre. Here goes Gilbank again. I think he might want to win this one. Low be tied anyway, they're challenging him for that lead position. Driving like this tonight, there's little doubt he's got this one pretty much already confirmed as a race win. Johnson, he's feeling the full force of William Yarrow. Frankie Wayman there cuts across the front end of Yarrow, but Yarrow gets on the accelerator a bit quicker. Andrew's wide has made him cut back to the inside, and it's half distance. Maybe the two quickest cars out there are Raymond. Oh, yeah, it's quick too, but, by the way, but it's uh, Raymond and Dan Johnson. But Gilbo's absolutely flying. So I think Roger's possibly up amongst the leaders, but uh, difficult to tell because there's so much chopping and changing in this one. No dispute who the race leader is. And uh, Tom Boyer in front of him, limited experience in the VH, we mentioned that earlier, but he's driving absolutely superbly. And he's got the way Gilbank. Gilbank is a man on fire. Gilbank flying, Jeff Nichols second, then Matt Houston, Dan Johnson and Raymond coming next. Joe Booth, Will Yellow, that's the race order. I think Mick Rogers in there too. Just uh, possibly Joe Booth in that 446 car, and then Will Yarrow, yep, I'm going that. Will Yarrow next after Joe Booth. Now then, this, um, this poses the question, that was quick without any question is he quick enough to get away from those three right behind him Dan Johnson Dan Johnson in third place he'll get a decent fly so to a way with so to a Matt Newsom Matt Newsom is quick no two ways around it so it's not done and dusted just yet is it Gilbert maybe has got himself just ahead of the pack. 
three to go. And it's Johnson now in second place. Wayne was sent wide. Johnson moves through to go second. Wayne was desperate to get back up to third. But I think Gilbert's got this one. Two to go. What will Johnson do? Has he got the legs? Has he got the pace to catch up with Mark Gilbert? Gilbert will not make a mistake, that's a certainty. Johnson's getting closer as they start this time around the last lap of the race. Last lap ball goes out. Johnson is certainly getting closer and he's blaming it to the gun as they go into that last turn. Lewis Johnson has got the power on. Gilbert tries to break away down the back straight. The distance is too great. Johnson takes later than late, but he's just hasn't quite got close enough. And Gilbert takes a win from number four down Johnson from a fast moving Frank Bowman Jr. Third over the line from Matt Newsom in fourth place. Jeff Nichols, a very, very impressive fifth. The race start could have gone either way, and the Wayne Yellows had a bear on the outcome. But Gilbank, rightly so, has taken the big win. One final live at Coventry is Jimmy Lyman. Come on, Jimmy, let's hit the first place trophy. Good stuff. And the runner-up, ladies and gentlemen, DJ Dan Johnson. Bobby Griffin and oh, looks like uh, Jordan Folding's got a problem there. Thank you, JJ. Has um, has been about there or thereabouts, but uh, maybe he expects us to do a bit better than uh, than uh, he has done this evening. He's, he's one of those young drivers that likes to Bradley Harrison, the Jordan Folders of this world. They've got the name, they've got the family tradition. It's an awful lot of pressure on young shoulders, but um, in time they'll become the stars of the future. Field. Which Brian 
Series on the centre of it. So soon as Jack Francis 216 and Ben Riley. Mark Woodall's got a punctured front tyre. So he's out, out of this one. And then as Wade Yellow's requested. Yellow's requested. Good to see the yeah, Thank you, sir. A reasonable first couple of laps, hasn't he? Certainly got amongst uh, some of the back markers. So, just waiting for Stevenson just to uh, be just quick on that final turn. He needs to pick up some power. Uh, ready to go green. Yeah, the go green. Uh, made some contact with it back in the 75 car but uh, only gets in each other's way really well yeah there's one more time right so the uh, Chris Farnell car just needs a, a bit of assistance Systems go by the looks of things now that the uh, kind of push assistance there for the 32 car. Ready to go? Yeah. The power's back on. And Johnson has uh, looked uh, pretty impressive form right throughout the meeting. And uh, goes well for his goal top challenge during the course of the season. Harrison, not number two car, the new number two car. Just six in behind Matt Newsom. Goldbank uh, already passed Paul Hines. Half a chance after that, but then. Um, 
There we go, the green flag goes down, let's see what happens, those four are broken away. And it might just be a stalemate towards that checkered flag because Johnson has applied the power and he's breaking away. He comes way this challenge on Matt Newsom, there's two laps to go this time. Johnson looks to be in control. Raymond goes in on the back of the 16 car. And that's uh, Dutch driver H112. Could be, although he's moved very sensibly out of the way. Last up of the race. Johnson from Raymond. I don't think Raymond's quite got. Oh, he's getting, he's getting closer. He's definitely getting closer. He's done it there on that straight. Is he going to contact? I'm sure he's going to let the last one to come Johnson. Oh, he's going to hit him. Johnson's car's backed up. Raymond takes the checkered flag from a very fast moving number 16. Johnson with no visibility whatsoever. Still manages to finish in fourth position. Red flags and red lights.